So this is the last of our sermon series on the Lord's Prayer. And we've done five weeks of uh, here and there, preaching straight through the Lord's Prayer. And we hope y'all that um, we hope y'all have enjoyed learning more about the Lord's Prayer as much as we have, and uh, that uh, we're proving that Lutherans can do a sermon series, hopefully, and uh, and and do it uh, do it well. We hope. So the last part of the Lord's Prayer, which is what we're talking about today, save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. Now you may say, wait a second, that's not the last part of the Lord's Prayer, but it is. (laughs) Your kingdom come, your will be done on uh, uh, the the last part about, sorry, kingdom and the power and the glory. That's one of those things that we think is in the Bible, but is not. I bet um, if if I asked many, many of you before you heard that, you would say, of course that's in the Bible, right? It's not. Um, I've heard it called a little uh, Protestant dance mix thrown into the end. Um, Catholics only pray to this part because that's in the Bible. Um, We think, you know, Lutherans, we're very biblical, and we are, but we throw in that little part at the end because it kind of ties it up neatly. Not that it's a bad part, um, but it's just this is where Jesus ends the prayer in the Gospel of Matthew. And I think it's significant that this is where he ends the prayer. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. That's a good way to end a prayer, because I think it's one of the most common prayers. My favorite author that I talk about all the time, Anne Lamott, has a new book called Help, Thanks, Wow. And she said those are the prayers that we most often pray, right? (laughs) Help, thanks, and wow. (laughs) Those are the things that we say almost every day, and so this could be termed the help part of that. I think that's a pretty common prayer, too. When we look up at God and we're not even sure what to say, we just say, help! (laughs) And Jesus put it a little more eloquently, but this is what we're saying at the end of this prayer, that it's okay to ask ask God for help. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. We're saying, God, help me out of whatever I've gotten myself into. So in my family, um, you you may have heard, my husband had to close his church. And that was a really painful thing. And it's not as, it's not like many of the trials that I hear about, but it's still kind of a time of trial. If you've ever closed a business or you've closed a church, something that that you worked for and had a lot of hopes in, you know that it's a painful process to close a church something that you've worked for and to give all those things away. And, and thank you for those of us who have said you're, you're praying for my husband and for me because it's, it's a hard time. And we've been through it before. Seven years ago, I had to close a church. And, you know, we know what this is like. We know that it's painful. And like I said, it's not as bad as some of the trials you can go through, but it's definitely a time of trial. It's kind of a time of testing. And seven years ago when I went through it, I've been saying to my husband, well, you're, you know, you're a little bit luckier than I was because you're not giving away all the stuff with a baby on your hip, which is what I was doing, <laughs> and a toddler running around, and, and all of these things. And, and that was seven years ago for me, and, and going through all this, and um, we were at home, and we, were, we, were, uh, we had done um, all these things. I'd given away the things. We had had our last, we had a picnic to close my church, and we were... We were sitting at home, and my baby was on the floor and um, playing, and my husband said, well, financially, you know, we're looking at all the numbers, I think financially we'll be okay as long as nothing breaks. Guess what happened then? (laughs) I looked down at my baby, and he was sweating. And he was, like, really, really sweating, and I thought, you know, it's really hot in here. Now, it was August in Georgia. So it's hot everywhere, but we started noticing, like, you know, a lobster that's being boiled. We started noticing that we were getting hotter and hotter inside our house. So, of course, right after we had just said, we'll be fine if nothing breaks, um, we looked at the thermostat, and we had the air conditioning cranked up, and it said 83. That's not good. Inside the house. And it kept rising and rising and rising, and of course, we had tried all the tricks, but... At that point, there was no choice but to replace the HVAC system in our 25-year-old house. And when they brought it out, flakes of rust went everywhere. We knew it really, really needed to be replaced. And of course, it was right that moment. (laughs) And I think then I looked up at God and said something 
along the lines of, seriously? <laughs> it was something like, help. <laughs> like, deliver me from this time of trial. This is getting ridiculous. <laughs> so we did um, what, uh, something crazy, but it ended up being a, a really wonderful decision. We looked at our sweating baby on the floor, and we were in our house, and we were sweating, and it was disgusting. And so we packed everybody up and spent money we didn't have and went to the Georgia Aquarium for the day. It seems like kind of a ridiculous solution, but it was cool in there. <laughs> it had just opened, and we hadn't seen it, and we spent every bit of eight hours at the Georgia Aquarium that day. <laughs> We ate every snack food they had to offer. We ate lunch there. We ate dinner there. Like, do we have to go home? Um, that day, right after my church closed and our air conditioning broke, was a beautiful healing day at the aquarium. It was ridiculous, I know. But when I saw the beluga whales, they look like they're dancing, if y'all have seen them. It's so beautiful. And, and when you're in that tunnel and the, the manta rays swim over your head, those are my favorite, favorite type of sea creature. And, and so you, you see the rays, and I have a picture from that day. What a gift of me with my baby son and a carrier, and he's looking up at the rays that are swimming above his head. And for that day, I was brought out of myself, <laughs> out of my troubles, <laughs> as, as temporary as they were and as silly as they were, to see that God is bigger than what I was going on. There was deliverance in sea creatures. <laughs> there really was in that beautiful day. There was also deliverance in air conditioning. <laughs> But that day, we were sort of brought out of ourselves, and I remember coming home and thinking after all of going through all of that, that the healing was beginning. Um, healing through sea creatures. I know it's very strange, but that was the deliverance that I had prayed for. And that's how it came that time. I think when we pray for deliverance, I was thinking about my dad, who also closed a business when I was in high school. Um, my dad owned a golf store, which was his dream. But, you know, money started running out. Not enough people were coming and playing golf. And he had to close this business that he loved and that he worked for. So what God gave him was not an aquarium, but was a call from um, the head of the church council saying, Bob, we need somebody to chair a call committee. <laughs> it sounds strange, right? Deliverance through a call committee. <laughs> but that's what happened for my dad he was unemployed for a few months, then he found a new job, but while he was unemployed, he traveled around and heard different pastors preach, and he took this on as his work and his goal, and he found a wonderful pastor from South Carolina who was, ended up being a mentor to me, and actually, um, in a weird coincidence, he's one of my North Carolina pastors that I told you all about, um, but Pastor Grunke interned for him many years before. He was a wonderful pastor, and that's what my dad did. It saved him, that servanthood. And I know he prayed for deliverance. He had two teenagers and lost his job, had to close this business that he loved. But he was delivered through serving God, through this call committee. And sometimes that's how it comes. Sometimes um, we're not sure how that deliverance is going to come, but Jesus tells us we still pray for it, even in, in the middle of everything. Jesus prayed for deliverance, even from the cross. And we hear in Matthew, um, a soldier uses that same word when Jesus is on the cross and says, who's going to deliver you from evil now? Uses Jesus' very words, who's going to deliver you from this trial and Jesus literally went all through a trial. But we know that God delivered him through death and resurrection, and that sometimes we're at a point where death and the life to come is what's going to deliver us, even when it comes to that. When we pray for deliverance from our trials, like Jesus taught us to do, when we pray for deliverance from evil, we don't know what form that's going to take. But we believe that God will send something might be in the form of a beluga whale. <laughs> it might be in the form of just peaceful time with friends or family. 
It might be in the form of going to the mountains. We have this beautiful psalm that says, I lift my eyes up to the hills. Where is my help going to come from? Which yet again, there it is, this prayer of help. And we ask, where is my help going to come from? And God says, it comes from me. It may not always be in the timing that you want it. It may not always be um, the form that you think it's going to take, but God opens our eyes to see that deliverance when it comes. Usually about this time um, of year, I will uh, start talking to you about a firm, the camp that I usually go to, and that some of our youth have gone to, the ones with pink hair. Look for them. Um, They went to a firm this week. But this year, I didn't go. This year, my husband went. And for him through that servanthood and through that community, he found a little bit of peace and a little bit of deliverance, even after the pain of closing his church. That's how God came to him when he prayed for help and for deliverance, was God delivered him through servanthood, through serving others, and through that community of people surrounding him with love and grace. It happens in these strange ways sometimes. It seems strange that we would be delivered through serving, for giving our lives to others. But it often happens like that. Or sometimes it's more every day. Last week, I'll just confess to you guys that I did not want to come to church. I didn't have to come last week. I wasn't preaching. I had gone on Saturday night. I didn't have to come to church. But I thought maybe I would come to the 1030 service. So I packed up my kids, and I mentioned my husband was out of town for eight days. Eight days. So I packed up my kids, and um, they said, why are we going to church today? We don't have to. And I gave them every terrible reason. I said, well, um, I, I have to go. Roy Tayoto is taking my picture for the website, and I have to go because we're running an errand around Holy Trinity afterwards. I gave them the worst answers. It was terrible. But when we got here... I realized why I needed to come to church that morning. Because I came in and and somebody gave me a hug, and I'm not a hugger, but some of y'all hug me anyway. (laughs) (laughs) Pastor Gunke and I share that in common. But it was kind of what I needed. (laughs) And we came in and we, we sang songs, and I heard a sermon about forgiveness. And I thought, that's what I needed. <laughs> when I called out for help on that long drive here, 30 minutes can be really, really long with two cranky kids in the car, really long. <laughs> God sent me here to church, to be in community, to sing and to pray and to hear God's word. And when I lifted my eyes up, sometimes this is what we need to bring us out of ourself and realize that things really, <laughs> they're bigger than us. We have a whole community of people and all of God's creation that is testifying that life is more than what we're going through right then. We know sometimes trials are terrible. I I don't mean to say that every trial can be fixed within aquarium or a call committee or, or things like that. I know that. Sometimes trials can only be fixed by death and resurrection for Jesus and for us. But we know when we pray this prayer save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. We know that God is there to maybe put some things to death in our life, to close some things that need to be closed. And then, because God is a God of resurrection, God is there to raise them up again. Amen.